Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Take these words to heart. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. The season of Lent begins with that one word, remember, remember. Remember as a cross of ash and dust is traced on the forehead. It's a sober beginning to the serious business of Lenten prayer and penitence, because on this day we embark upon a project of self-examination and of accepting responsibility and being accountable for the myriad ways we have fallen short of God's hopes for us, how we have hurt others, ourselves, and God by our own fault, nobody else's. Things we've done, things we've left undone. As we make this inward turn of self-examination for an honest appraisal of our actions and our state of life with God and with neighbor, it is of utmost importance to bear in mind that our goal is to remember, to remember who we are. For it is the human lot in a broken world to forget just this, who we are. And so the project of remembering starts with recalling that we actually share a common fate and a common end. From the burial liturgy of the Book of Common Prayer, we read, in the midst of life we are in death, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Sisters and brothers, our time together is not limitless, and our mortal journey does have an end. There is no time for anything but love, no time for self-righteousness and arrogance, no time for anything that divides us. The time we are granted is only best spent in love and reconciliation. Time only for that which unites and spawns true life. And so the ashes of this day bring us together as nothing else can, reminding us that we are all limited, mortal, and broken. The Ash Wednesday words spin us on our heels today from a world that daily seduces us into believing that we are in control, we are all powerful, and that we can have whatever we want at a moment's notice just the way we want it. This is the grand deception 
still being played upon humanity, a satanic gospel still leeching into our very souls, wreaking havoc and dismay throughout time. The Ash Wednesday words bring us from the heights of pride crashing down to earth that we may remember. We are heirs of the promised kingdom of heaven. The Lenten season of repentance originates in the ashes and the dust and the fragments of what we have done and of those things that we have left undone, the withered remnants of once green palm branches teeming with life, burned and reduced to the soot of today's liturgy. They bring to mind the setbacks and the regrets of the year gone by, setbacks and regrets we wish to forget but cannot because they have been seared into our memory and maybe even scarred cherished relationships. The dust of our failings reminds us of our common heritage of brokenness. Across this very nave, our shared human fate will be etched in ashes on one another's foreheads for all to witness and for none to judge. We are all broken. We must remember. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. We recollect these things not as though we can actually alter what has been, but so that in remembering and repenting, we may dare to dream of not repeating them. In daring to dream such dreams, we are transformed. In daring to dream such dreams, we remember that it is not by our own strength that we are made new, but that it is by God's grace and love that we are transformed and made new. We are paradoxically cleansed and renewed in the dust of our Ash Wednesday remembrance. All we do as the people of God is a reconciliation of what God has done for us, a remembering of what God has done for us. Our Jewish sisters and brothers to this day begin their ancient Passover celebration, reciting the great events of their history and redemption. They dare not forget who they are, nor from whence they come. As Christians, remembering takes us back to our roots in the cross, and we remember our roots by marking our lives with the cross. At our baptism, we were anointed with the oil and the sign of the cross and marked as Christ's own forever. In our daily prayers, we cross ourselves in the name of the Holy Trinity. As we approach the altar on Sundays to receive the bread and wine, we are reminded to take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. The cross of ash on our forehead today, it conforms us to the image of the crucified one, the Word made flesh. Remember that we come from the Father, the creator of the dust and sinew of which we are formed, and through Christ we return to the Father giving back our mortal and fallen nature, sanctified and renewed in the death of him who knew no sin, as Paul explains. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Today's world, like that of Jesus' day, is marred by violence at home and war and terror abroad. And we might find ourselves asking, how can one find hope at the crossroads of such suffering and anguish. Perhaps, perhaps it comes only in remembering that the horrific contradiction of the cross is in reality the paradox of life. Our Lenten journey begun today will begin to draw to a close on Monday, Thursday as the full meaning of the cross is revealed Good Friday, Easter Vigil, and then Easter Sunday. In the cross, the very universe is transformed and evil and pain are overcome. We remember that life is not defined by the number of days, but in how we live our days that are numbered. Put oil on your head, Jesus tells us, and wash your face. In other words, even in Lent, put away your gloom. For I say to you that there is something else on your horizon that you need to remember this day and throughout the season. 
Remember that Lent is not a season of suffering for suffering's sake. Rather, penitence serves the uncomfortable purpose of peeling away the scorched skin and brokenness and delusion to remember who you truly are. To remember the image of God in whom you are made. The image of God in you that has never been removed, no matter how dark the stain of sin. This is what Lent is about. Cutting to the essence of who you are so that you can remember and even rediscover who has always been at your very core, God's love that has never been repealed. God's grace undeserved. God's love unwavering and unconditional. God hates nothing that God has made. And so we, like the prodigal son with a written plea, seek to return to God who, like his father, cuts us off and embraces us in unlimited love, which is the best way of saying you are forgiven. You are free. This is what we remember in Lent. This is what we're to rediscover. After all the penitence comes to an end, what we are to celebrate at Easter. His resurrection is your own. Have we forgotten? Have we forgotten? Now's the time to remember. Remember.